There's church accused of operating conveyor belt of asylum seeker baptisms. There is increasing concern about the role of various churches here yeah. for people coming here seeking asylum who then claim to have converted to Christianity to help their case to stay in this country. There is some really revelatory detail in this report. So this is basically uh, a reverend, Matthew Firth, who was a priest in the north of England, coming out as a whistleblower and saying he saw firsthand swathes of asylum seekers being baptised and it's very odd to get a pile of people at the same time coming. He also claims that he witnessed uh, uh, migrants handing money to a Muslim middleman to facilitate the baptism and therefore help their applications. And this is what we've seen with Abdul Azidi, for yes, example. Yes, and this on is, the one this hand, is the he's whole a point. good Muslim who wants yeah. a wife. Right. On the other, he got asylum here because right. he'd converted to Christianity. And his friends are on the record as saying we knew he was a good Muslim, you know, he's ordering halal meat from the butcher and all the rest of it. I think what's so depressing about this is, you know, I don't know if the Church of England can fall any lower in some people's estimations, but here we are. Are they just naive at best or are they corrupt at worst? That's what's very disturbing about that. They're so obsessed with the, the few people that now attend church, with building the numbers. Uh, this is not the way to do it. Uh, Reverend uh, Matthew Firth, is it Matthew Firth? Yeah. Yes, who you mm. mentioned there, says it's not direct wrongdoing from the church, yeah. but it is complicity. Yeah, James. I mean, and there's this big debate around, you know, making windows <coughs> into men's souls. And uh, you know, obviously, if the church, the church would argue, you know, if someone comes to them and says, genuinely, I want to join the church and I believe we found God, what right do they, as a matter of faith, have to turn that down? I think the other interesting thing for me in this story uh, is when he talks about he was being pressured by asylum seekers' lawyers to make up claims to support their, their, their claims. And he was saying, you know, direct letters from lawyers asking me to say certain things about their clients. And I said, well, no, I'm not going to say that because it's not true and I don't have any evidence of it. And so I think that, for me, brings in more professional debates around qualifications, about what the arguments are being made by, you know, lawyers. And that can lead to things like dispractice and being barred, etc. And that, for me, is the really interesting angle here, which is that I can understand the debates around the church and what you know, conscience issues, etc. Mm -hmm. But the lawyers involved, there's a lot of cynicism, and I hope we see a lot more investigation in some of the practices they're doing. And, and so, essentially, what you're saying is the lawyers are advising their clients that actually yeah. to convert to Christianity might be a good thing. A according to this story, it certainly seems to be the case. And I think there's a big, big question to answer about some of the tactics being used.